Couple reports about the DDAC attacks show that the small and sustained attacks also cause significant damage to the victims. Uh, Ganesh, you have a story about some trends in uh, DDoS, is that correct? Yeah, I have a story about um, different trends in DDoS attacks. Um, basically from um, Q4 2018 until Q4 2019 last year. Uh, the reason I picked up is there are two reports from Kaspersky DDoS Protection Labs and Imperial Labs. They both independently have their reports put it out uh, like within a week or 10 days apart. Uh, but I would like to talk about the, the key points which I observed, uh, which are, uh, I mean, good takeaways. I want to just discuss about them. Uh, first of all, I will go with the Kaspersky Labs findings. What they found is really interesting. They said uh, in the last one year of the study they did, there's increased attacks on the Sundays. The DD attack, attacks actually increased on Sundays by, yeah. I think, up to 13% from 11%. Um, typically, I mean, my experience is uh, typically Sundays are t seems to be quite days. Uh, now seems to be maybe I think a trend is changing now. I think uh, Sunday could be somewhere Monday if you follow the sun or the maybe timeline. Probably that's why they're trying to pick up on Sundays. And another one is almost one third. Uh, one third in the sense about 30% of the attacks are happening on the weekends. That uh, my guess would be there not be many folks around to looking at if something is happening, maybe mitigating at the so certain amount of time. That could be the reason. This could be, I think, um, may not be an interesting fact, but typically during the Black Fridays, maybe Cyber Monday and Christmas holidays times, we used to see lots of attacks, right, on the various merchants. Nowadays, it, it, it doesn't seem to be the case. Maybe probably the, the reason being maybe the holiday seasons are spread across multiple days. Uh -huh. So no, no day is a bad day, actually. I think any day is, a, I think, a good sales day for uh, right, yeah, merchants. Um, that that de demand isn't as isolated. To yeah, yeah. People aren't only buying stuff on Cyber Monday. They're buying stuff all, all, all the days. Yeah. And uh, one more thing is they found the use of ARMS. ARMS is uh, one of the protocols used by the Apple for a remote management service. It's um, almost typical to um, RDP and Windows. Like it's an Apple version of remote desktop kind of thing. And that's a trend we actually we talked here, uh -huh. and uh, they observed some uh, some attacks being taken care of by via that protocol. It's interesting, you know, not too long ago, you know, you, you think Apple said, "Well, we're, we don't get viruses, we don't get attacked, you know, we're safe, <laughs> right?" Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, unfortunately, the, the the attackers are realizing, hey, you know, here's a target. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, the, the targets may not be larger, but it could uh, cause the damage uh, nevertheless. Whether DDoS is like small or large, it doesn't really matter, but the, the damage can be done even with the smaller, you know, sustained attacks. I think they found most of Linux-based bots that's being part of these DDoS attacks. Okay, that's good. So that, that, that seems... That kind of confirms what we've talked about here for yeah, yeah. years, right? Yeah, especially Roboto Botnet, is, which, is a re which we recently talked about, which is P2P based. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mozi is a, another latest IoT based botnet. These are being heavily used in these attacks. Any reference to IoT devices in this? With respect to Moji, the way they provided is, I think they were using the DHT protocol, okay. which is nothing but I think uh, it's like a P2P based protocol but it could be used for a Bitcoin also. Okay. But uh, we all know IoT botnets are used for either DDoS or most of the times it could be for my crypto mining because they have the resources, more resources at their disposal. They can leverage that horsepower to basically mine the Bitcoins. Uh, that's that's about the, some key points about the Kaspersky Labs. Uh, Kaspersky Labs, sorry. And coming back to Imperial Labs, what they observed is um, they observed shorter and uh, most frequent attacks, DDoS attacks. I think they saw um, about 51% um, of the attacks, not more than 15 minutes. Mm. But what they observed is uh, these short burst of attacks are happening more frequently. Uh, why is that? This could be possible. Even if it's a shorter, longer DDoS attack, it takes some time to bring up to the speed, right? You have to reboot uh, 
maybe involve servers, applications. I think as soon as the systems or applications are up, uh, they're trying to hit that server again. Another for maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and they stay low. Again, when the resources are up, they're trying to attack it again. So the kind of cooperates with their finding, I think um, uh, sometimes uh, some victims are targeted multiple times. Hmm. So that's uh, one thing. Why, why they're doing it uh, like shard-based interval attacks? Uh, I, I guess uh, we discussed here uh, DDoS for higher services. Uh, what it is is basically for $5, anybody can go and buy a DDoS service. It's just a click and gig. Uh, you can pick the target and how long you want to do it. And it's like a script kiddies kind of DDoS services. I think because of the availability of uh, DDoS for higher services, the shorter duration attacks are more mm. seen frequently nowadays. And that might tie into the the days of the week trend too. If it's, uh, it's if people positive. are using DDoS for hire, yeah. you know, they're probably more likely to do that. Maybe days they're not at a regular <laughs> office. <laughs> yeah. 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 <clears throat> I mean, there are so many interesting analogies we can find out, but th these are really f stood out for me while reading yeah. through the report. And uh, yeah, as I said, uh, two thirds of the victims are attacked up to five times with these short duration attacks. I think they'll hit for 15 minutes and they come back after maybe an hour or so again, hit for another 10, 15 minutes, and they come back again later. And I think that might refer back to the IoT situation, right? If these vulnerable IoT devices are sort of easy targets, mm -hmm. right? They're not just getting once and then hit once and then somebody responds, right? Yep. Nobody's turning that machine off or, you know, changing configurations. It's just sitting there. Sitting there, yeah. Doing its same thing and yep. if it's available for the next, you know. I think uh, that's what it is here. Yeah. Um, and uh, <coughs> most of the attacks seems to be from, I think even though I'm mentioning the geographical locations, it doesn't necessarily mean uh, the malicious attackers are sitting inside those countries. I mean, the most countries they have seen is China and Philippines. I think most likely the victim systems are right there are maybe compromised, maybe some of the IoT devices. We've seen lots of uh, various vendors actually, they, they concentrate more in Asia pack region, they're part of most of these IoT partners. That could may tie up with this one, why we are seeing so many, you know, attacking sources from those reasons. Um, and the most targeted uh, industries are gaming and gambling. Uh, that's given for, I think we are seeing this uh, gaming uh, DDoS attacks for a long time. It could be by the competitor, or maybe by the players itself to gain unfair advantage. You know, they, they yep. block the servers and they get the um, unfair advantage. And uh, coming to the heavily targeted countries seems to be Indian subcontinent, I think they saw about 22% of the organizations within India being heavily targeted, I think followed by some in uh, US and some other countries. But uh, these are the some of the um, interesting tidbits I found, you know, really interesting to share. Yeah, definitely. Well, did, did, did any of them, get asked, did any of them like surprise you? I mean, what's the things that most surprised you? Uh, the first thing uh, from Kaspersky is uh, most attacks happening, increased attacks on Sundays and weekends, which is not the trend. Uh, we, typically, it used to happen uh, during the weekdays, but now they right. moved on to weekends, maybe probably uh, with the intention being maybe the, it's m less chances to be detected on the weekends because of the less personnel around. Mm. And I would think it might speak more to the, the attacker, not the purpose of the attack. Right. Yeah. That the people actually executing these attacks, the profile might be changing over time. That it's yeah. a less sophisticated user now that is required to yeah. to run a DDoS. Yeah, that's a really good point. I think because of these uh, DDoS for higher services, maybe the specific actors happening maybe could be particular to one specific time zone. So really, you know, even individuals and people who aren't, you know, protecting themselves can become part of the resources used for a botnet or potentially if you're you know in a gaming environment or you know you could be a victim of a botnet so really at all times you know be aware of how you might be impacted by uh, DDoS attacks